Okay, now let's look at the way they teach their science. There has been a move in this country and elsewhere to have creation science taught at the same level, the same bias as evolution science. Unfortunately, science is integrated. You cannot pluck out evolution science, which is why I'm talking about physics, geology, and later on a few other very interesting things. And I go to Smith School in Livermore in California as an example of how creationists teach their science. Smith School in Livermore, California was awarded a grant for six gifted 12-year-old children. This was a grant for special learning. I have the order form from the teacher, a Mr. Bear, and it documents what he ordered, not for six children, but for 30 children. He has ordered material from the Institute of Creation Research and nothing else. That is broad. And that is being dealt with currently in the course. So when you let them into the school, we start to have just a little bit of fraud creeping, just an innocent error, but to creep in. <laughs> so 30 children had a course entitled Creationism and Evolution. Much of the material ordered was material written by Gish, some of it was written by one of his colleagues, a Gary Parker, and I quote from his little comic book that was given out to the children in this course. And the comic book is entitled Dry Bones and Other Fossils. And it says, and I quote, evolution is based on the belief that you have to explain everything without God. I'll say it again, if it doesn't sink in. Evolution is based on the belief that you have to explain everything without God. That is perverse and it's heresy. So you give them an inch into our schools and that's what they do. Now the science course that these 12 year old children were taught, the only material they were given in this course on creationism and evolution the only material they were given was from the Institute of Creation Research. This teacher, Mr. Baird, gave him a lovely balanced course. Now, how do I know that? I have to give them original worksheets, directing them what to study and how to do it. I also have the children's pre-test study sheets, telling them where the information is and how to do it. So I have the children's information from a school. These are 12 year old kids and they are being directed to look at only one source in apparently a balanced course. I have the children's final examination paper from Smith School, Livermore, California, his state. And we have a remarkable situation exists. These 12-year-old kids, after a balanced course on creation and evolution, were forced to make a decision between creationism and atheism. Not creationism and evolution, creationism and atheism. Now what happened was that the six gifted children rejected creationism. These six gifted children were sent back to the library to do it again and to look the form again. <laughs> Two of those children became atheists. Four of them had to lie to save their skin. How do I know that? Because it's documented. So you let them into the school and that's what happens. So as soon as they're in the school, we have fraud, perversity, heresy, they don't teach science, and our Christian friends create atheists. That's what happens. Now let's look at how they get some of their data. We have 
documentation of the way in which our friends acquire information, gather their data and disseminate it. I refer to a July 1982 debate, a PBS debate, between Gish and a Dr. Russell Doolittle, and the well-known scientific information about the genetic similarity of chimpanzees and man was used as an argument to show that there is not an evolution of man from the ape, but the chimpanzee and man had a common progenitor, a common precursor. Quick as a frog, our Dr. Ish came back with an answer and said, yes, the bullfrogs have protein and genetic structures closer to man than chimps. So straight away, we've got an answer. So what do we do? We go to the source of this information and try to find the answer. So we have a public debate on television. The well-known scientific fact that chimpanzee and man have very close genetical ties is put up. And as a, re a reputation, as an argument against it, we have a statement from a scientist, PhD from the University of California, from a scientist saying that bullfrogs have a genetic structure much closer to man than chimpanzees. In the Institute of Creation Science's own literature, the magazine Origins, two scientists, Shardville and Patterson, accused Gish of publicly lying on television and demanded the data be produced. It was not. There have been continual demands to have this data produced. At a Bible science conference in Cleveland, Ohio, again, when pressed, our friend gave the answer, and I quote, I have no responsibility to produce the evidence. So here we have a scientist debating that suddenly, as this magnificent fact that bullfrog protein is closer to man than chimpanzee protein. We try to find the source of this information and our scientist stonewall. He says, I am not going to give you the evidence. So what do you do when you have a scientist that makes a statement like this and refuses to give you the evidence? All we are left with is going to the Bible. And I go to Revelation. Revelation 16, and 13, and I read, and I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. <laughs> so when we chase the source of the information, we find it is fabricated. That is the only creation I can find. Creation of facts ex nihilo. <laughs> creation of facts out of nothing. When we look and try to find the information, we don't get it. And we are left with only one alternative, that we have uncleanliness coming out of the mouth of a false prophet. That is the sort of science that is generated from our creation. So we have a situation where when we look at the implications of their very, very simple science, that it is absolute idiocy. When we have a look at their publications, we find an interesting statistic. One in 11 words is a blatant lie. It is well documented in all books that we have, pre Cambrian fossil. One in 11 words is a lie. We have a fabrication of data. We have this publicly on television. And the only alternative we've got, I have given you. So when we hear the handle printing with this pitter patter about Baron 747s and evolution, you must, if you have a critical brain, go to the source all the time of the information. Now, the second law of thermodynamics 
is something which we have heard many, many times in these debates. And I want to bring up some information on the second law of thermodynamics. Drink first. Our second law of thermodynamics argues that we have order going to disorder. Or in a closed system, we have information which is just slowly running down and running down and running down. I've looked at Gish's performance in space. Now in this country, we have an organisation called the Creation Science Foundation Limited. It is a company. It is limited by law. All their documents are submitted to the Corporate Affairs Commission. These are public.